So what I want to talk about is what I learned or what I'm learning in getting over heartbreak. And it's not what you think. This is not about self-empowerment. This is not about self-love. This is not about discovering independence or discovering just more of who you are. This is not about any of that. Because I feel like what I needed or what I need, that kind of support that I'm looking for, which I'm realizing now what it is, does not seem that available. of the breakthrough room i'm your host christine and i'm really excited to get into today's episode and to be honest with you i don't know if this is the beginning of a season three or if this is just a special episode so normally when i do start a season i'm hit with all these topics and i'm just furiously writing furiously is that even a word furiously that is a word well we're gonna go with it um writing down ideas like just oozing with creativity and I can't really stop the inspiration. It just keeps coming. And I am such a planner. Like, I don't think you understand to the extent of my planning abilities. I'm a little OCD. It's kind of problematic, but it soothes my soul. And when it comes to podcasting, I will map out how many episodes I want, what date will release it, what date will end, what topics we'll talk about. But to be honest with you, this time, not so much. In fact, I've been kind of going through it. I'm in this very uncomfortable season in life, which what we're what we're going to get into. Um, I just I'm very stagnant, and that stagnation is that a word? My God, I feel like it's been a long time since I have spoken on the podcast. Anyway, moving forward, judge me later or judge me now. I don't care. Keep listening. That feeling of being stagnant just manifests in every area of my life, including my creativity. And my creativity is, I think, the biggest thing about me that I thrive off of. Like, it brings me so much joy to be creative. I'm just at this block. Like, I I don't know how to move forward. And I'm really learning how to surrender and I'm, I'm praying and I am just waiting on God's timing. And I honestly had no intentions on starting up this podcast today. I had no intentions on recording. In fact, prior to a few hours ago, I literally had no idea what I would be talking about, but I was getting ready to go to the gym and I was in my office ready to log off my computer to go on my lunch break. And I'm drinking my, you know, pre-workout, just, just getting in the mental headspace. And I turn around and I look at the wall and all of a sudden I hear record an episode today. Not literally hear the voice, but like internally heard that voice. And it was such a weird feeling when you get those types of messages when they come to you like that because it's very calming. Even in that moment when I said that, I didn't know what I was going to be talking about. I don't even know why I said we're going to do this today. But I didn't really question it. I just was like, interesting. Okay. Okay. I see where we're going with this. Let's, 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 let's. Let's talk this through. I get in my car thinking I'm going to go to the gym. I'm now getting hyped up off a pre-workout. And before I know it, I just start talking out loud and the episode is just coming out my mouth. And actually, I don't know about anyone else, but drives usually is like my place for creativity. So sometimes I just will go on a drive and that's when ideas start to fly. So never made it to the gym. In fact, I just kind of whipped my ass around and head back home. And here we are. And this episode probably is going to be one of my most vulnerable. And I feel very compelled to share this. And I hope that what comes out of this episode, if just one person resonates with what I say and I give them a feeling of relief, the feeling of relief that I needed to give myself, that would just make me the happiest happiest person. So what I want to talk about is what I learned or what I'm learning in getting over heartbreak. And it's not what you think. This is not about self-empowerment. This is not about self-love. This is not about discovering independence or discovering just more of who you are. This is not about any of that. And I'm sharing this because I feel like what I needed or what I need, 
that kind of support that I'm looking for, which I'm realizing now what it is, does not seem that available. Typically, when we experience breakups, it's not uncommon for a lot of people to look back and realize that maybe they got lost in their relationship or maybe they made too many sacrifices that didn't really honor their their authenticity. Maybe they learned some lessons of what never to settle for again. Um, they learned their worth. Those are all really common learning, self-discovery moments when we go through breakups and heartache. But that was not where I was at. That was not the comfort I was needing or the lessons that I needed to find to feel better better or to find closure and for a while the best way I could describe it is I've I've felt suffocated in grieving this loss of a relationship and and here's here's something that I am learning is that heartbreak ending relationships is a form of grief our brain our heart does not understand the timeline of relationships. It does not understand how long it's been since that person left your life. Your mind doesn't get the difference all that well. In fact, I'm going to share this, but truthfully, I'm sharing this fighting my ego because I'm feeling embarrassed when I share this in that this person that I am still learning to recover from, he hasn't been in my life for over a year and a half. And the relationship we had was only a few months long. When you say that out loud, when I say that out loud, it sounds absurd. It sounds crazy. How could I still be trying to recover from losing someone that I only knew for a few months? How could I care so deeply for someone that they've impacted me this much? Well, heartache, grief, those things don't understand the timeline of things. It understands impact. And this person was extremely special to me. And dealing with grief is a hell of a hell of a cycle. I would say that I probably teeter back and forth in depression, going through the motions of life, unenthusiastic for things that I used to be enthusiastic for, just kind of feeling like there's a part of me that's missing, you know, and I and I keep saying, I just want to be that person that I was before I met him. Like I want a piece of that person back. The person that was creative, ambitious, um, joyful just so excited to tackle things and I honestly just go through the motions you know it's it's an accomplishment for me to just walk through the gym doors doesn't matter what I do in the gym that was not me that was not the person today the person I am today is not the person I recognize prior to this this relationship it's been difficult to navigate all these very conflicting feelings there's a lot of shame that I experience in trying to navigate and heal from this experience. And I want to kind of go into two two main things that I've really learned. So the first thing, I'm actually not going to say I just learned this. I think I've always known this, but it's almost like it's connecting to a place where I am starting to accept it. So one of my flaws is that if you are in my soul, if you are in my circle, If you're in my circle of love and I consider you a close friend or a sister, whatever, right? I almost expect that person to support me the same way equally. Like everyone should be able to meet a standard of support. And if they don't, I feel like I'm not heard. I feel like I'm constantly defending myself. And here is where I had to wrap my head around it because all the advice and all the support that I'm giving comes from only but love, only but love. But not everyone can support you in the same way because first, as humans, when we give advice, we usually give advice from a place of our own worldview, our own experiences. And your perception of relationships and love and heartbreak and how to recover and independence and all this stuff comes from how you experience life. So to someone that hears me openly say, I desire a relationship, 
they may take that as I desire a relationship because I'm trying to fulfill myself and that that relationship will complete me. And this is where we're different because while some person or persons may go through different experiences in life where they realize and look back that they were sacrificing too much of themselves, that they were using relationships to fill a void, or maybe they saw it from other people. And listen, I I am going to say like my younger self, for sure, I would, I, we all did. We didn't know what we were doing when we're younger, right? And where we're at today, we're in a very healing generation. We're really trying to do better. So we're all figuring it out no judgment. But where I'm at today is I've lived my life as a single woman, literally. I I haven't had a relationship technically, and that's another story. Technically, my only and last relationship was over 10 years ago. I I don't even count it. We're going to have to save that for another episode. But if I'm not a liar, so technically, but I have lived my life as a single woman. I didn't stop living because I desired a relationship. I have accomplished a lot of things that I'm so proud of. I have done things. I have challenged myself. I have done things to help myself grow because that's what I wanted. It didn't stop me. I didn't wait for someone. But desiring a relationship just means that I really want to share those things with someone. What I hate when it comes to being a female and vocally saying you desire a relationship, people automatically label you as desperate and you know, you don't have worth or you don't know who you are. And no, you know, a woman can desire, deeply desire a relationship and also be really fucking complete without a man. And she can say those things and it shouldn't be projected on to her that she doesn't even know who she is. So I'm giving that as an example because someone could be giving me advice from all the love in the world, but they're giving advice to the person that they are. So if they were me, that's who they're talking to. They're not talking to who I am. If we don't understand the other person, we judge them and we label them. And it's judgment. It's not It's not malicious, but if someone looks at me and they can't understand why I'm still holding on to this person or why I feel so deeply for this person, for whatever their reasons why they don't think I should feel that way, they will label it as, she was seeking fulfillment out of him. They will label it as she thinks she doesn't deserve better, right? Because they don't understand it. And in ways I can't fault them for not understanding it because we experience life differently and they're not in my brain. So I'm not the epitome of healed person. But what I can tell you is I've done enough work. I understand my triggers for the most part. I understand how to navigate my triggers for the most part. And I do understand a lot of my wounds, a lot of my trauma, a lot of my programming. And every day I work on it to be better. Every day. I have a fairly good understanding. And when I'm highly emotional, even in my highly emotional state, I have my little logical voice going off on the side saying, Christine, those thoughts aren't real. Those aren't true. That's your inner child going off and screaming, be the adult. Sometimes I can't be the adult. Let me just be clear. I'm the child screaming and I need to have my moment and I will get through it. So sometimes the advice that's being given is not really given for me. It's given for them. When that happens, for me, it's frustrating. It's a constant feeling of having to defend myself and it's very suffocating because I'm feeling judged because I'm not acknowledged, all unintentional. But indirectly, I'm also being told that I should not feel this way. I should not have feelings for this person. I should not desire this person. I should be over this person. Uh, This person was an asshole, and I should think that, and I don't. I'm not arguing that I deserve more. I deserve to be loved in the way that I love. I deserve to have a man that will love me not just in words and feelings, but with action. I deserve all that. I'm not saying I don't, but I also can not feel like this person is an asshole. I also can miss this person and love this person. But when people are telling you that you don't, you shouldn't feel this way, you, he, he's this, he's that, and you don't agree. I start to feel like, well, shit, maybe something's wrong with me. I should be over this by now. I should not feel this way by now. I do feel like I should have experienced something different and I should have been, I should have had a different feel experience of love and, 
you know, this could have been a different outcome and blah, blah, blah. And I'm worth, I'm worth the effort, but I am struggling to feel those thoughts, to, to think those thoughts and feel it with such conviction that the pain of the heartbreak dissipates because everyone's telling me, everyone, people in my life and social media, they are telling me that if I am still crying over someone, it's because I don't see my worth. And what I really needed, I didn't need someone to fix me. I'm not broken. I don't need my friends. I don't need my family. I don't need TikTok and Instagram with the, you know, those motivational sappy videos to fix me. Maybe people really like that. I honestly can't stand those things, but that's just me. I can't stand that because that's not what I need. What I need is permission to have conflicting feelings. I need permission to know that you can care about someone. You can love someone. You can love a person who's hurt you. You're allowed to love a person who's hurt you because we're not perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Guarantee that if this guy was in front of me and he was 100% honest with me, I'm sure I hurt him in some way. Maybe my list is a little bit longer because I didn't break up with him, but I'm sure there's something he could tell me that I said or did that hurt him. I'm not fucking perfect. So you can still... I can still desire someone, miss someone, mourn the loss of this relationship, the friendship that we had. I can still have these very conflicting feelings and also know that I deserve better, that it's not about my self-worth because I'm not questioning my self-worth. I can feel this way and wonder all these questions. I can say to myself, I wish he would come back so we can talk again. And then on the other end be like, Do you even want him back? That's very confusing to feel that you would want to have a second chance with someone and then wonder, well, I don't know if the opportunity presented myself that I'd be so quick to jump at that. It's very confusing and I just needed permission to feel all the feelings for as long as I needed to feel these feelings and not be told that the reason why I'm still feeling this way is a reflection of how I feel about myself. Listen, the relationship triggered some wounds. It certainly did. But I am not at a place in my life where I will stay in that space for long periods of time. I may stay there longer than someone wants me to, but it's not on them to decide how long I stay there. I will move at my own pace. I just need to feel like I it's okay of what I'm feeling. And I just feel like that was really lacking. I felt that, you know, people care about you and when they care about you, they don't want to see you hurt. And their re- their response to seeing you hurt is to try to make you feel better and to try to fix your problem. And all they're concerned with is trying to remind you that you're a bad bitch. I don't need a reminder. This is not about who I am. I know I'm a bad bitch. I'm in this body every day. I'm aware. I just want it to be acknowledged. I just wanted to be heard. I just wanted to say, listen, I'm on the edge, but I just need you to sit there and let me have my moment. That's all. So based off the understanding that people will first usually give you advice based off of their own experience and not based off of who you are and what you need and where you came from, and knowing that even though they mean it with all love, if they don't understand you, they have to label it something so that they do understand. That just means not everyone can support you or you can't go to them equally for the support that you're looking for. And just because you can't talk to someone about something as openly as you can with another, it doesn't mean there's distance in your relationship. In fact, You can still talk to those people equally as open, but some of them you just may have to pick and choose, cherry pick the advice you like and not get too caught up on feeling misunderstood. And that's something I need to work on. It's that's, that's a wound of mine is constantly feeling misunderstood and having to defend who I am because I just so desperately want to be heard. Not everyone can hear you, but it's not because they don't want to. It's because they don't 
have the experience to hear those those frequency that volume that music they've never they don't know what to do with it and that's okay so that was one of my big lessons i've learned in heartbreak and my second one this this one whew, this is going to challenge me for the rest of my life and that is giving up control when we first it's very normal when we first go through heartbreak, we obsess over all the details and replay everything over and over again and try to figure out where it went wrong. What could we do differently? Why, what is the real reason? What is the real reason why this relationship ended? Because it can't be what he told me. Doesn't make sense. I, I, I do not accept. And so we just obsess. And it's very normal because we're trying to make sense of our pain. But it's also very controlling, right? Because... Because I can't accept that the other person made this decision, that means I need to obsess in trying to control my emotions by creating a narrative that will make me feel better. But nothing will actually make me feel better. In fact, I know in my heart that this man gave me as honest of a reason and explanation as he possibly could. I know that in my heart. But he will never be able to say it in a way that my controlling side will be able to accept because he's not saying it in the way that I want to hear. In the way that I want to hear, he is not saying it that way, so I will never be happy. I will be like, that doesn't make sense. And there is parts that it doesn't make sense to me, I'm going to be honest. But there's also just, again, context to our lives. We have different experiences, therefore we see things differently. Sometimes we just won't be able to accept a difference in understanding on how you live. That, that, beginning step of a breakup is very very common is to kind of go through and make sense of the things those things the next question i kept asking myself though from the beginning is god why would you let this happen why would you bring a man into my life why would you let allow me to feel so deeply for this person why would you allow this person that seems to be i'm gonna say this word loosely perfect for me and then rip him out of my hands as quickly as you brought him in them. Why would you do that? And I don't understand the reason. And I would obsess over that. God, why? God, why? God, why? Because I couldn't just accept that maybe there was answers that I didn't know. I couldn't accept. I could, I could, I could create theories left and right, but my controlling side wanted to know. And I did eventually, <laughs> it's taken me a year and a half, to actually realize one of the reasons if not the reason why this had to happen and that was to push me closer to god i'm not i actually would like to share that story another day and how i connected all these pieces and the crazy signs that came up but look just real quick looking back every single man i've ever ever been involved with pulled me away from god this was the first one that pushed me towards him he doesn't even realize it but he did and so I know that was one of the reasons, right? But what I can't or what has been a struggle in getting over the controlling part is that, okay, I know this reason. I shouldn't feel this way anymore. Or, okay, I'm feeling these feelings. I should be able to fix this. Okay, fine. I may not be able to have the reason, but how do I fix this? I want to control it. I want to control the timeline of when I will feel differently and that is not possible. I'm cannot control and this is what i finally came to terms with i cannot control how soon i'll feel better but what i can control are my efforts in trying to get there so giving a hundred percent doesn't look the same every day it just doesn't whoever made you believe that is moving through life with a perfectionist survival survival mode attitude like and i've been there i don't want to go back i hate it there please don't make me go Sometimes my 100% is 40%. Sometimes my 100% is 110%. It's just different every day. Sometimes my biggest accomplishment is putting on a a real bra. And then other times my accomplishment is having a bomb ass workout. I can't control how soon I feel better, but I can control what I do to try and help myself. I've dove into my spirituality. I joined a church. I'm doing a spiritual fast. I pray and talk to God every day. I'm getting myself back into fitness. I I actually just bought a pole because during quarantine, I was enjoying, I I got myself involved in in pole dancing. And I was like, I need to do that again. That makes me feel good. I socialize when I have the energy. And that's another thing. I'm in a very isolated state right now. I'm in a very uncomfortable place. 
uncomfortable place in life. And this discomfort is killing me because I can't fix it. I can't make it better. And that's part of this control is accepting how to coexist with this heartbreak. Coexisting doesn't mean I'm just gonna like get over these feelings as fast as I can. I don't I don't want to be afraid of my feelings. I don't want to be afraid of my thoughts. I know a lot of people try to distract themselves and I try to distract myself to grow, not distract myself to avoid. So how do you coexist and honor the feelings that you're having, the grief that you're going through, the confusion that you're experiencing, but still find joy in your life when it's difficult to get out of bed? And I've accepted that I have no control over this timeline. And that's probably the biggest thing that I will always have to practice is letting go of that control. And right now, I keep trying to remind myself that as much as I keep saying I, I want a piece of that person back, that me, the woman I was before I met him, I'm I'm realizing I'll never be that person. This This phase in my life is full of confusion, and isolation by choice and and not by choice it's sort of situational and there is a lot of discomfort in feeling like I can't fix myself can't make myself feel better no matter how hard I try but I'm like you know what this is this is this is my season this is the season my a season I'm in And maybe this would have been triggered by something else. Maybe it wouldn't have been triggered by this heartbreak had we been together. Who knows? Who knows? But this is the season that God put me in. And there's a reason for it. And I know at some point I'm going to come out and I'm going to be a more evolved and brighter version. And this heartbreak is not about my self-worth, the feelings that I'm going through. It's not about that. Giving up control over when you'll feel differently I think is a huge thing. And I think the moment I accepted that I have no control over my timeline of healing and I'm allowed, I gave myself permission to feel how I feel. That's a lot of when the weight started lifting off my shoulders because I was relieving myself of the shame. The shame of feeling like I was supposed to be at a certain place and feel a certain thing about a certain person at a certain time of my life that I didn't fucking feel and I wasn't there. So I really hope all that made sense because like I said, my uh, planner type, it would have had an outline of this podcast and I really just spoke from my heart. I really felt like I needed to share this and maybe this will just be for me. Maybe this is part of my healing. I mean, it is part of my healing, but I do think we need more messages out there for people that are going through heartbreak that doesn't always surround someone's self-worth because it's not always about that. You're allowed to be complete and really fucking miss someone. I hope it reached someone's heart and gave them a little relief because I really needed that message over the last year and a half. So I don't know what our future holds with the breakthrough room. I don't know if we'll have another episode next week. I am giving up control. For right now, I am staying present in this very moment in that this was what I needed to do for this very, this time in this space. And hopefully you and I will talk soon. So if you like the episode, if you like the podcast, please like, subscribe, follow, leave comments, whatever your platform has you do, please do that. And follow me on my Instagram. It's the.breakthrough.room. Interact with me. I would love to hear what you have to say about this episode, have some conversations about it. I'd love to hear your perspective and, and what resonated with you and what didn't. So I'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.